Thank you.
Good afternoon. Uh, let me see. So yeah, we're gonna continue here with the uh, the anatomy for now. Uh, you want to make sure that you've that you have uh, done your homework. We'll check that at the end of the class. I want to try and get done a whole bunch of these muscles today. Uh, I want to connect the the rib cage to the pelvis. So I kind of been doing some little diagrammatic drawings here uh, before we started. Uh, so get, yeah, make sure you get your skeleton, your drawing of the skeleton. And we're gonna continue adding more muscles. Uh, so yeah, and you need your colored pencils. And like I said, we're gonna work on the muscles. It's the muscles of the trunk. The trunk is the, the uh, rib cage in connection to the pelvis. And we're gonna work on, we'll, we'll start off on the side view and also on the back view and then move on to the front view. We'll do some of the arm muscles. Here, the muscles get, uh, get bigger, so they're easier to draw. Uh, I was pushing it here with the neck muscles, I knew, but it's like, it was fun. I don't know. I don't know what you thought, but I thought it was fun to do all those. Uh, it's hard to do them in, in, the, in the classroom when the class meets because, because they can only be a certain size. Even though I make the drawings life size, I think here I could, I could zoom in and do more, more of those details. But I'm, I'm gonna start off with the serratus muscle. And I'll show you on, show you on my notes here. Both, uh, See, we're fixing to work on these muscles here. Oops, here. See this? This is the serrata, the orange one. And then also we'll, con we'll connect the rib cage to the pelvis with this muscle here. This is the external oblique. And they, they interlock. You can see by this kind of weaving that I did here. Uh, so we'll do we'll do those to get started, and we'll start on on the, the serratus, and it's called the serratus because, as you see, it has teeth like a saw, como un serrucho. That's why that's why that's called. And I'll I will show you where where uh, where it all starts. So going going here on this drawing. I can move it out. So this muscle, the serratus, it starts off, this is the scapula. The serratus starts off uh, under the scapula, between the scapula and the, and the rib cage. And you see here, you, you remember you want to number you want to number your your ribs. And look, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Remember that this is the pectoralis uh, minor, and it's start it attached up here. This structure is the the brachialis, which is part of the scapula, and it came down to the fifth rib. Uh, the last time when we we did this, I kind of remember that I should have done this one first. I tried and worked from the inside out. And this, the serratus is underneath, as you can tell, it's gonna be underneath the, uh, the pectoralis uh, minor. And to get started, you know, you wanna look, you know, number, you know, you wanna number your, rib, your ribs, one, two, three, four, five. And the fifth one, I'm gonna bring it over and see. And I like to start with this, this portion here. Uh, see a little bit behind the pectoralis uh, minor. And I like to start with this one because it, this, this is the, the middle portion here. See, and it goes all the way. 
and back into the into the scapula. And, and this, this muscle attaches from the first rib, which we won't see because it's hidden under the scapula, uh, all the way down to the ninth rib. And you, you see only a portion of it, but I think it's a really in, interesting muscle. And see, this one is perhaps the one that is most horizontal, this portion. It goes from the, from the back, underneath the scapula, all the way to the to the fifth rib. And then you have, from here, you, then you have overlapping it, you have the sixth, the portion that attaches to the sixth rib here. And the only ones that, that, uh, that we see uh, are the ones starting from the six, seven, eight, and nine. All these uh, pretty, pretty much get covered up. And also these get covered up by, the, by another muscle that I'll go over in a little bit. And so the six overlaps. And I'm, I'm going to outline them first here with this red color. And it's almost like uh, there's all these, when, when you're drawing these, try to you know, make the connection that this is kind of like a, like a bird's tail or like, a, like an Indian headdress. And it, see, this is the six. This is perhaps the one that overlaps uh, all of them. See, it overlaps, then it's gonna overlap this one that is on seven. So I've done these three. You know, they're all slightly different, you know, in shape. And see, they all stand out of there, out of the out of the lower portion of, of the scapula. So they kind of radiate out of there. This is the, the one that attached to the fourth and then to the third rib. Of course, these are under the pectoralis. This is the pectoralis uh, minor there. And then we probably don't see the one that attaches to the second and the first. But the, these that I'm, that I'm uh, drawing right now, six, seven, and then this is, and you might wonder like, how do you locate where, where they end? Well, you look up and see, they kind of line up with a, with a spinal column. And then some go a little bit further, a little bit back, but if you just kind of bring the spinal column, the neck here, or the neck portion, if you bring it down, that's where you, you see them. Is you've got the spinal column at the bottom here, the lumbar portions. And if you make a straight line, that's where you're gonna see the, the ones that are most important. So we've got five, six, seven, and six, seven, eight. And see, they all go back. They all go back here. And then nine. And you know, just to get the effect here of uh, that, it does this kind of thing. You know, the the rib cage, it kind of does this. You know. So I'm gonna add some shading here with the with the red chalk. I want to get another color to bring them out more. Uh, 
again to to show that this is this is bulging out here. Sir, there's a couple of people waiting to get in. Alrighty, I guess we'll we got to let them in. So using the side of the oh my chance would need to shade it. And like I said, it goes all the way up here. These I'm not gonna cover too dark because there's gonna be other muscles coming out of the side of the scapula. I don't wanna get that build up of Pastel dust. Just to separate. These four, like I said, six, six, seven, eight, and nine are the ones that are going to become visible. And only saw a portion of them, you know, the tips, the very tips of them. Some white here to really emphasize that this is where it curves. If you just if you just came in, we're working on the serratus muscle that starts off from the back underneath the scapula, the bottom portion of the scapula, and comes almost halfway on the side view of the of the of the rib cage here. The anatomy of the arm, we will have to do that separate, especially the for this the, the side view. Now I might have to go back and uh, depending how it looks, I might have to bring them forward a little bit. Uh, so that's the serratus muscle and uh, a little bit more shading here. And see, this is the ninth, the ninth rib and see it only covers about halfway of that, of that one there. So we'll continue for right now here on the on the side view. The next one, like I had mentioned, these two muscles that interconnect uh, and I'm already seeing that. Let me just go a little bit more forward here.
make them a little longer. And uh, later on, I'll show you there's the, a muscle called the latissimus dorsi that goes over them. So, and it's like a blanket. And when it goes over them, like around this area, uh, all these individual forms get lost and it just becomes like a big round shape. But you want to keep in mind that underneath that, they're all individual portions like this. And the next, the next muscle, let me do that with, uh, so that we can maybe see a little bit better. Uh, you want to. You want to think of a see this is this is the form that that muscle the uh, external oblique this is the form that it makes of course here it's exaggerated I'm doing it blue here and uh, it's gonna go right here. This is what is uh, in common language called the love handles, right here. Uh, and this one, it attaches, uh, just to go over a little bit of the terminology of the pelvis, this is the iliac crest, that, that arch. And it, it covers, it, it attaches there, it attaches to all the to the to the ribs, starting from the twelfth all all the way up to the fifth. Uh, now it's this is the form that it makes uh, down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw that, and you, you can see that on my notes here. See that's. That's the form that it makes. Now, of course, this that I that I, that I also did over on the other drawing, uh, it's an exa exaggeration, but just so you understand the mass that it makes. And even though it has fibers attaching to the to the rib cage, uh, you see some of that inner uh, connecting with the serratus, but the dominant shape there is the uh, the rib cage. So I'm gonna bring this shape. Uh, I'm going to, see this is my, my 12, 11, 10. Uh, and it's gonna, it's gonna go, I'm gonna do this, not all the way to the, to the front here, but about right there and this is where you're going to lay this block and it you've got the 12th rib and these are the transverse process of the spinal column so it'll probably overlap them but there's a there should be a distance here between this muscle the uh this is the the rectus of the spine And let's say we're gonna keep it, keep that shape on the 10th rib here. And remember 11 and 12 ribs, they're, they're just floating there. The 10th rib is the, 
the widest part of it. After that, it starts to, you know, kind of get more narrow. But this following here, the following the shape of the 10 fifth, that's where the top, the, the top of it is, is where it makes this shape. This is just so you can see it better. Uh, but then I want to go over it with the uh, with another color that will make it that will make it more realistic. And see on the on the on the ribs, maybe so you can see it better. Let, let me get some yellow here. Remember these portions here are, these portions are cartilage, right? And a little bit behind that, So you got the cartilage portion there. A little bit behind that is where this is going to attach. And see, I'm going to start off from because it, it connects into those gaps there. Again, keep in mind. The main, the main formula of them drawing these lines over the rib cage. The main lines, the main form is the rib cage here. And there's this, there's the big mass of it down here. And then you can feel on yourself, you know, you can just grab that portion. Uh, there's a big mass and then there's this that is thinner. Right. So there, there is right here at, at the 10th rib, there's uh, like an in-between portion that is maybe thicker than the top, but not as thick as the bottom one. Uh, just keep, and, and on, if you go on uh, social media and uh, Instagram, where people post pictures of themselves uh, when they work out for five hours a day, every day, you see women, this is pretty amazing what contemporary culture has done with muscle. You, Used to be only men could develop these thoroughly. Now women that spend so many hours in the gym, you see this forms, of course, more organically separated, uh, but you see them on, on, you can see these muscles on this today. And I'm gonna add some shading here to emphasize that this is the, the roundness of the rib cage. And I'm hoping to you know, have the model after spring break and uh, you know, uh, When you see that, when you have the model in front of you and you know, the model moves slightly, you know, you sometimes you see the rib cage more prominent and sometimes you see the serratus and sometimes you see the external bleak. So you see all these layers of form and it becomes a challenge at times to, uh, to know what you're looking at.
option here. I'll put some white to kind of indicate this top plane here. Of course, this is, you know, very exaggerated, just so, just so that you understand what's going on. And see, this is that transitional form. And then up here, I just want to emphasize that this is a rib cage. And so this, I'll combine, I'll try to make a, like a violet color. Now keep this, you know, don't cover up these ribs here because you want to understand how the forms are affecting the surface. You know, sometimes we see rectal of the spine, sometimes we see rib cage, sometimes we see serratus. So make sure you don't lose the rib cage in this portion right here. And see, it's gonna hang over the iliac crest here. And see the strokes that I'm doing here, trying to emphasize the volume. I think like a, about a year, no, maybe more than a year ago, I had a, of course we, in the drawing, in the, in this class, uh, we had, when I was doing this drawings for the class, uh, where we had the model, uh, who was pretty muscular, uh, his name is Roland, and, uh, And at the same time, there was a student, uh, was a student named Leo, and Leo was a, he was a boxer. Well, he would train as a boxer. He wasn't actually boxing, but he's, he was he's also very talented. He's very good at drawing. And uh, but he would tell me that he would spend many hours in the gym, and then so I asked him, well, maybe you can, you can show the class also some of your, some of the muscles that we are talking about. And he was, he was very defined and you could, he was a, he was a very good model because you could see all this definition of uh, muscles. Uh, And you want to keep, you know, keep. Uh, it's hard to not get lost in all these forms, you know. Uh, so what I'm what I'm gonna do here? I don't want to lose the ribs here. 
I want to put Y because they are the dominant form here. And then I'm shading according to the roundness of the of the web page here. And you want to keep you want to keep this in mind that it's right here on the fifth row where it ends. And probably uh, its fibers combine with the part of the background minor there. And then here, I want to put some blue in this gap here, just to, and I'll put, I'll put some white. White. Just to differentiate the color a little bit. And also down here, uh, like I mentioned, it's, uh, it's called the external oblique. And if it's called the external oblique, it's because it's to differentiate it from the internal oblique that is that is uh, also helping in making this this form here. Okay, so that. I'm trying to define that the in between form. Okay, so we've got, you know, color, just color it up here lightly because we're going to do the, the pectoralis uh, major. And then what's going to cover up all this here? But uh, don't forget that it goes all, the serrated goes all the way up to the first string. And Okay, we'll wait here on the, we're also gonna do the rectus abdominis, which is the, the muscles on front of the stomach. I think before we go on, we're, I wanna draw these from the, from the back view. They don't, they're not as, I mean, they're somewhat visible, but not as much as from this view, of course. Uh, and another thing, you know, like uh, I was something that got it got covered up, and you don't want to cover this up. I can. I've got the seventh up here. People coming in. The seventh uh, cervical vertebrae, and you don't want to lose that. That is. Uh, let me let me outline it here. 
Talking about the receiver. I'm exaggerating it. This is uh, a way to find your way around the anatomy. That is the spinous process of C7. So I, I made that yellow. Uh, also down here, that's a bony landmark, right? Because it's the skin right on top of the bone. And then down here, see where I, what I left the uh, white? I want to put yellow also there to indicate that it's another bony landmark. And I know like when I lose weight, I can really feel this. I can feel them right now in this part of my life. But at parts, certain periods of my life, I've not been able to feel this as clearly. This, and then right at this portion where I have, where it's white here, coloring it yellow. These portion, these parts of the pelvis uh, do not get covered up by muscle. This is just like, it's, I guess it's used so that the skin uh, attaches there and it, it has a place for the skin to hold on to. And this, uh, this portion here uh, on the, on the pelvis is, uh, let me show you the, on the back view here. Let me line up the, the, well, let me lower the camera a little bit here. See this? Let me outline them. When you see a, a new the nude model, or when you go to the beach and you see people there in their in their uh, swimsuits, uh, uh, they these are the dimples that you see on the back on their backs. And it makes a dimple because all around it there's there's muscle, and there it's attached right to the bone. And by finding those two dimples you're then able to locate the, the skeleton underneath. And uh, this, uh, all these things have a name, you know, like uh, like C, like, like the spinous process of C7. Uh, these are called the posterior because they're on the back. Superior because they're on top. It's the posterior, superior, iliac. So the, the crest of the iliac uh, spine. So it's, I believe it's uh, P, posterior, superior, iliac spine, PSIS. What these are called. And when we go to the front view, there's there's something similar, you know, like I like the the portion that I pointed out on the side view that was on on towards the front. That is the the uh, anterior superior iliac spine, and there's also an anterior inferior, and those are little parts of the skeleton where it's right next right on the skin. And you always want to make a note of those, you know, the bony landmarks. And, and they will never be covered up by muscle. No matter how much weight, how much body fat somebody has, those are always going to be noticeable. Uh, okay. So what did I want to point out? I don't know. All right. So yeah, let's, let's do, let me show you the, my notes here. Uh, 
I'm going to do on this on these notes. You can see the layering of muscle that I do. Uh, this is the serratus from the back view. And see this here, this is the latissimus. And that's the muscle that covers them up and makes them look just like a round mass. But uh, in the meantime, before we put that on there, you, uh, again, we'll start off here. Uh, Pointing at just to make this stand out more. And this also the you might have noticed this uh, on people also this that spine this is a spine or well, this is the spine here and this is the back of the scapula. Those are also bony landmarks. You can always see those on people. You can always feel them very clearly. Uh, so coming from underneath here, uh, going all the way down to nine, remember just staying there. See that covering up the entire ninth rib. Uh, we have nine, we have eight, we have seven. Of six, so maybe you see a little bit of five. And I might want to, I might want to exaggerate them a little bit more, a little bit too thin here. Just to kind of bulk it up. See, I've already kind of drawn the outline of the, of the figure there. And uh, let me erase my first attempt here. Move this. The latissima is that muscle that covers them. It's actually very thin. So most of most of this bulk here will be the serratus. <clears throat> and I'm gonna darken it here right underneath the scapula. to give it opacity. You know, again, Serratus, this is serratus muscle. Goes all the way from nine all the way up to the to the first rib. And but it starts off from the lower portion, you know, the scapula underneath between the scapula and the rib cage. And then down here, you can already make out my drawing here of the form. This is that it attaches to, to 12, but this, 
This is the form that you want to give it with. Kind of like a book, like a book that is, you know, stuck right there. And, you know, just so we know it attaches to the 12 rib, but this is where the mass of the muscle is going to be made. The shading with it. And it hangs over the iliac crest here. So this is blur it out. And then remember all these attachments. You know, it's gonna do that. Uh, you, we don't see the other ones. Probably the one that attaches here just to the knife. The other one for A, that'll be more on the front. So this. <coughs> okay. And that color is just to differentiate it. And I'm going to go in here with the more blue into it. I'm trying to kind of speed it up here with this. I like doing this kind of work, but it takes it takes a long time to do that kind of delicate uh, observation. And it's a lot easier. It looks better when I use the, the harder pastels, but it just takes longer to build up the drawing. See, like right now I'm just using the more of the softer pastels and it's, it's a lot, goes by a lot faster. All right, so we got, and see now he's starting to fill up, you know, he's looking more, more, you know, uh, like he's alive. Uh, but see that there's gonna be that gap there. There's, uh, there's other muscles here. And then the, I still don't wanna add the latissimus. So we gotta do some more muscles up here. I think also at this point we can do
we can do some of the muscles here on, on the arm. That's why I've got these drawings here. Uh, on the back of the arm, on the back of the upper arm, actually. Uh, so make sure you put in your serratus, your external oblique, and that you make these dots here. These are the ACIS for short. Posterior superior iliac spine. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go uh, because when we do the pectoralis, uh, it'll cover up some of the muscles of the arm that on on the front view. But just so you can, we can start building up. You don't want to leave the arm too. Uh, and then there's a. These muscles interact with the muscles of the, of the scapula. And you'll see how they, how they do that. So we're going to go on the humerus. And we're going to do first the, the triceps. And that's what I have here, the three portions of the triceps. So we're, we're going to do first the first portion, this right here. It has it's called it's called the triceps. It has three three portions. This one is uh, the deepest and. This is the elbow, this right here. And growing out of that, see it has, it uses up all this space here. So first you wanna, you wanna draw this. And this is the, the medial, medial head of the triceps. Now, we don't wanna color all of this because uh, it's gonna get overlapped. So, you know, you draw that shape, it goes, if you divide this, you know, you can divide this length, let's say from where it attaches to the scapula, to the elbow, you divide this to thirds, one, two, you know, approximate, it goes up to the first third. Uh, so that it, it attaches, you know, to the humerus and to the, to the, this is the ulna where the, where you have the elbow and what I'm drawing right now here, this is a tendon that overlaps it. And I'll color this yellow so you can see it more clear because it's, I do have a lot of lines here overlapping. So this, this is a tendon that overlaps the medial portion of the triceps. And you see what I did up here, it has this angle here and this. And that's because the two other portions of this, of this muscle, that's where they attach. So 
So starting from here and going a little bit higher, And then starting here, this is, I mean, this can be exaggerated more so depending how muscular you want to make this guy or this lady here. This is the lateral head, this overlaps the medial head. And uh, I'm going to color this. And so you got this and that. Let me get a little bit of green. Just to show that it's farther away and it's deeper. This is all that remains of this muscle. It's all that's visible. Put some white. And this is pretty flat. I'm gonna draw these lines across. I'm sure you if you go to the gym and you see people working out, you know, lifting, you see this really defined. So that's all that remains there of. I might do wider here. And I'm gonna fill in, well, let me use uh, a lighter color. See how this looks. That is the, the lateral portion. See, it has this little tail portion that goes almost all the way down to this. So these two stay on the humerus. Now the other portion is tricep long head because it has its attachment goes right here onto the onto the scapula. And then these get, you know, they'll get covered up by the deltoid. You know, the top, the top section. And see, does this kind of, it kind of folds over itself.
put some orange to this one so we can see it better. I'm going to add some highlights here. So that's, those are the three forms that make up the triceps, one, two, and three. This is the same one. And uh, I think we'll leave it, we'll leave it there. And we'll go to the Give, I think that we'll, we'll leave this as it is and we'll go to the front view because we can do the rectus abdominis on the front view and the serratus and the external oblique on the front view. So we'll, I'm going to switch. Make sure you have all these muscles on there. External oblique, serratus, the three portions that make up the trapezius with, with the this is the, the tendon that is used by the long head and the lateral form. And these two things also. The PCIS. And another, uh, another bony landmark are these structures here. These are, you know, where you, you know, the funny bones. That's why this is called the humerus. Uh, because it feels funny when you hit them, right? It, the medial and lateral condyles, that's what they're called. Those are also always uh, used, or they're always visible, you know, on, on every person. You see the skin right there on top of those. They also become dimples. Okay, so I can maybe switch the drawings here. So here we have the front view. We push it back. And uh, let's see which one. Which one to do first? I think we'll do we'll do the like I said, the rectus abdominis.
Let me show you the notes here. You see the orange there. And this, this muscle, uh, It attaches on the fifth rib and down to the down to the pelvis. Get some, get some charcoal here. And no matter what I do here, you want to you want to put plenty of white on this the arch of the on the rib cage. And so you've got the fifth rib, right? Which is it falls. You know you want to keep. Uh, remembering the the proportions. See the fifth rib is right there at the, at the second head measurement, and you've got the the cartilage portion of the of the of the fifth rib, and like somewhere between here and uh, the pectoralis. Uh, minor, you want to do this here. This is going to go, we've got the pose, the, the middle of the pelvis a little bit to the side here. This connects See at that angle there. This is the basic shape that it has. See, it's kind of like an upside down triangle. It attaches there to that front portion of the pelvis. And so all this nice drawing I, I did here is gonna get covered up. Right. So it's made up of, of course, everybody knows a six pack, right? Uh, but see, it's, to, you know, just to start off, uh, the belly button is on the third head measurement, which I've got right here. And right about around that area, you're going to divide this like this. Now, different books will divide this up, you know, differently. So this makes one portion, the lower abdomen here. And then you wanna, you wanna make a line here from the middle. This is gonna start to divide into the six pack. The six pack is actually up here. And right here, I'm gonna make a, a diamond-like uh, 
shape here. But this, of course, this also goes all the way down to the to the bottom. I think I can move this closer. I have to just move this down a little bit. Let me straighten it up. So that's what I'm doing here. This this is the location of the umbilicus or the belly button. Now at this point, this is just kind of like a geometric, uh, you know, breakdown of it. And then uh, another portion is up here. This is the uppers, you know, around the, between the six and the seven. And then you've got the tenth rib, and which is like the the bottom here of the of the rib cage. And see that will approximately give you a six pack between one, two, and three. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna build on that. We're gonna build on this, make it more. A little bit more natural looking, kind of like what I've got here. We can make it out there. And you also have uh, up here, this portion actually does this. A portion attached to the fifth, like this, a portion to the sixth. And then a, like stairs, um, a portion attaches to the seventh here. It has these three portions. And I, I'll make it more noticeable when the, right now it's all just very geometric. So one. And I'm gonna curve this down because it just sort of looks more organic. And so you know, keep that in mind. I'll, I'll make it, I'll make this more clear in a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna use yellow also to emphasize uh, there's a connecting tendon here in the middle 
of the, of the body. It's called the linea alba. Or down the center here. And then using that, let's see it at the base of the uh, of the sternum. And there's, you know, there's uh, separate this so it is not as angular. This will become the you know the divisions here of the. Rectus abdominis. So now I'm curving it here so it looks more realistic. Let me bring it closer still. I'm going to make this, make this muscle in the very large. So I'm going to do a lot of pastel painting here. See those three portions at the top? One, two, three. And see, I don't want to lose the, the arch of the rib cage. Now I'm going to add white and you'll see it'll, it'll become opaque and we'll be able to see it better. Blend it here. <clears throat> See this, this like so that it looks more realistic. I gotta bring it down. Curve it.
and I'm shading so that if they look more round. And that makes it look more, more weird. It's a very long muscle. One thing <clears throat> you don't want to, uh, you don't want to lose this the umbilicus. This is at the third head mushroom, even though it's a fleshy landmark, it's not a bony landmark. Those are not as, as uh, trustable as bony landmarks. These change if the, if the models move. But it's still important to know where that. See now, I'm adding some uh, curvatures here, but it make it look more like like muscle. You know, these are the divisions. You know, right? I had them very straight, angular. Now it's becoming more. And this, I do think this top one, I kind of did it a little too high. I think I can bring it down to the A. Yeah, I started way up here to kind of go on with the A here. And then I don't want to forget this is the. Uh, the arch there on the, <clears throat> of the ribcage as well. See there, that looks, I can spend three hours working on this muscle. I think that right there gives me good ideas. I'm just gonna define it a little bit more. Define the out, the out right there. those three portions. Again, these are very uh, defined and uh, muscular individual. You see those three divisions. Maybe when you see boxing, some of those guys who strength, you know, strength, strengthening their, their trunk uh, so they can take a body punch better. Yeah, you might see those divisions there.
So that, that's that's the three primary you know divisions that you see. But then some books have another division down here. <clears throat> but that's that's what you want to have right now. Can't help myself with that. I like to look like muscle, like actual muscle. These things are boring. It's more realistic. <clears throat> maybe here so we can see this line better from this thing right here. And that should help. Okay, <clears throat> that is the rectus abdominis. And well, down here, it overlaps the, the bone. It overlaps the pelvis. And uh, like I mentioned, you know, uh, <clears throat> this yellow portion here of the pelvis, before I forget, this is the anterior superior iliac spine. Again, another bony landmark. And these here that are lower, it's anterior inferior iliac spine. And they become important because muscles attach there also. You know, as we develop the muscles of the of the lower body, you, you'll see what happens there. So you want to want to make that notation there. This is the ASIS, I believe, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior. Deciding which which one to do next, uh, the serratus. <clears throat> so the serratus. Uh, this is where it's going to be here. And I think just to save time, the serratus, I'm just gonna do it on one side. Uh, so look, I, I gave it all this, this mass here, probably a little too much. Like I said, the serratus starts from nine all the way to the fifth. So this is the fifth and you've got the, 
looking at this muscle. Pectoralis minor. Uh, so look, it's to give it the mass that it's going to have. Look at this here. Of course, it goes, as I had mentioned, it goes all the way up here to the to the to the first rib. But we're just going to focus here on this portion. So it's like fingers, you know, like wrapping around like that. So that's this one gets is gonna get covered up with the with the pectoralis, and then we got the six. This one does. This is the one that you see. It's kind of like like uh, like like fingers or like claws wrapping around. Fifth, six, seven, and they keep getting slightly smaller because they keep going further back. And then just the ninth here. <clears throat> but like I said, they go all the way up. These are the these are the visible ones. I'm gonna make it too fat. Put some white here. And get some water. A little bit of charcoal here. Now, what happens with the see this is what happens with the uh, external glute. I'll do the same thing that I did with uh, the rex abdominis. So this again, this is you know, that book form. And on, on the front view, you can see better this uh, transitional form here that I had mentioned before. And then up here again, it's all it's just the 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 rib cage that is the major form. 
Now, let me, like I did before, let me do this with the, with the blue. So you don't want to, you don't want to overlap that bony landmark there. That form there. To indicate that it wraps. Some white to it. Getting texts. You see, now I'm going to do some of this and so that it looks more lifelike, you know, just going to curve it. Separate these two forms here. And I think this may look too narrow. We're going to give it more, more volume here to be thicker. You see, I, I stayed very much within that very angular uh, shape I gave it at first, but I, yeah, I had to flesh it out a little bit more here. And then also in the uh, This, see, we draw a line here. This is where the pelvis tilts, so uh, tilted. See, all of this will be away from the light here. The same thing here, I'm gonna give it, make it, make this look a little thicker over here.
And I want to put a little white here on the individual ribs here. Uh, that's the major point right there. And a little bit of blue. And this would be the how the external bleed, how the fibers kind of grow here. But again, I don't want to lose the ribs here. Six, seven, eight, nine. And see this this gap, it's filled with. Uh, I'm gonna make this green, but it's it is like a skin or like a tendon all this in between. And there at the bottom, from here, there will be a slight opening down here where another muscle will come from the inside and onto the leg here. So this green to make it make it look like it's sunken in because it is this I use my charcoal to indicate how it kind of see these strokes I'm doing show that it's, it kind of projects out of there, something over here. I'm gonna shade it in, this is a rib cage here. A little bit of white here. Just 
to sort of try and make it more realistic here. I don't want to lose the eyes there. So. We're still got time for what else? I'm fixing here to do the pectoralis. Just define this a little bit and uh, so the the uh, the pectoralis when I put this in see all, all these muscles that I put on here they're going to be underneath like the pectoralis is going to go over part of the part of the uh, rectus abdominis and of course going to go over the external oblique and over the serratus but it also overlaps uh, this is the the brachialis this structure And there's a muscle here that becomes part of the of the bicep. See, like this, the pectoralis minor. And then from the side view, this how it goes back. The same thing with this muscle here. Now this is gonna get overlapped in a little bit here. And see, uh, uh, second. sir, sir, yes. can you move it up a little bit so that we can see? The... Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that makes a difference, right? <laughs> see, to the second head measurement there. And then <clears throat> I'm just gonna I'm gonna do just the top portion <clears throat> of the uh, of the bison. See, and it's it uh the bicep. So you have this. You have like a, a, a like a groove here on the humerus. This is the front side of the humerus. And uh, use yellow, yellow stands out to me. And you see on these notes here, see this drawing. 
see the bison has two heads. That's the one that we just put in there. This is the coracle brachialis. It's like a sling. It does this. So the tendon that attaches on the on the bicep, and I'll I will outline it a little bit. Pretty interesting, just like a like a sling that is wrapping around. That's what I'm defining. In this area, I wanted to just show you this because the pectoralis is going to attach right here, this area, just to show you what it's what is going to cover up. And this is that sling-like tendon that is used by the bicep to separate it from this muscle here. Okay, so to do the the uh, pectoralis uh, major, first of all, I don't want to lose this here. And then do this, and I want to put some white here for the to indicate the form. This is the form of the minor pectoralis minor. Let's put white here so I, I don't lose those forms. So you have with the with the pectoralis, you have three portions. See, one portion that attaches to the to the clavicle, one that attaches to the sternum, and one that attaches to the rib cage. And that's what I've got here. See, it's like. The clavicular portion overlaps the one from the sternum and the one from the rib cage. And see the rib cage is slightly smaller there. So that's what I'm gonna try and draw right now. And I'll start from the from the rib cage. So look this, I'm gonna do this portion here. This one. So that attaches, see it overlaps. Let me use some charcoal. So we can see the outline better. And see, 
This is the fifth rib. This is the second head measurement. So overlapping the fifth rib here. This is the the portion that attaches to the to the to the rib cage. Of course, I'll have to make adjustments here. I'm going to use Binet here for convenience here. And to show that this is the, let me put some red. This is the, the one that is, that is underneath. But also this is prop this is the one where you start to see more of the mass here. Remember up here is right next to the rib cage. So this is the costal portion or the rib portion of the pectoralis major. This is to show that it's overlapping all of this here. So here there's no way around it, it's gonna get muddy. Colors. See, so it's lower on the rib cage, but it's higher on the humerus. And then I will do the sternal portion. You see that? It starts there on the middle of the, of the sternum. So all of this area here. Again, here it's very thin. Can be easily observed on the models, on very thin models. And this, it'll do this here. It'll overlap the one that we just did. So all this space. A brighter, stronger light. Any white here, this is where you've got the big mass of the, of the pectoralis of this area right here. This.
because this is where you where all these muscles kind of overlap. Pectoral is minor. And the three portions, that's where they kind of fold over. And also you this is where the fat deposits on the on the breast. I'll redefine the the bottom portion of the mouth because uh, to lose it and then find it again. And see, I want to get this effect that here we can kind of see through it because we can this seeing through was kind of like to symbolize that we can touch it very easily. But yeah, this you know. This is where the big mass of it is going to be. And I want to in, like, indicate this. line work here to show that this is the big mass here. And so just to show them this overlaps the previous form. So it's like three, two, and then we'll do the clavicular portion. And this is the, the last muscle we'll do, and then we'll look at your drawings. Um, and then all this space here. Putting out a lot of white to show that this is right on top. And more white here. You see, I think that's giving it the, the mass right there. I still gotta color this this part. I seem to add some blue, a little bit of blue.
just to redefine it a little bit. You see this, of course, cursor, it goes to the front and then it goes away. So I'm going to put a little bit of violet here. But it separates into two portions, this clavicular, clavicular portion. See that, that pushes it back. So one, two, and three. Something like that. So that should have made this guy look fuller. Yeah. I wanna. We're out of time. So about like half, no, 20 minutes. You see now he's looking muscular. Still looks kind of weird with just a few muscles, but looks better than when he was just a head there. So we did the rectus abdominis. External oblique, serratus, the pectoralis. And we also did them on the back. On the back view, we did the, the triceps as well. So you want to make sure you get all those muscles on there. I'll photograph this and put it on the put it on the announcement so you can see if you missed anything. But yeah, there's always more stuff to add. Okay. So I want to see how you're doing with your proportion. That's the that's the important part also. And have a weird shaped figure. So I will, again, I'm, I'm gonna check your drawings and uh, they have to, the, the grade will be according to how accurate they are. Uh, sir, got a question. Yes. Uh, do we take a picture of what we did today and put on the blog or something? Hold on. Uh, well, I want to check first. I want to check your drawings from the weekend. Uh, but yeah, you want to document all this stuff on your blog. Uh, let me see here, Blackboard.
Today we're the eighth. I'll be right there. 